Let's talk a little bit about another announcement um, this morning, actually, coming from Sweden and Swedish broadcaster SVT. They announced the first half of uh, the one of the most, or the, probably arguably the most celebrated uh, Eurovision selection show uh, every year at Melody Festivalen. And um, we all know that Oscar Sia, he is going to be the host of the show. And interestingly enough, um, he will always alongside a group or like a roster of guest hosts, uh, kind of like what they did with Kirsten Bjorkman in 20, well, it was this year technically in 2021. So every show will probably have a different co-host. Um, but they did announce that um, the 14 entries and um, not entries, so we know 14 of the acts are a total of 28. A lot of cool um, returning names. Um, you recognize them here, the pictures. Um, some of them is Liamo. He represent. Uh, he took part in Melody Festival and twice, most recently with Hannah Fern in 2019. Uh, he's been doing really well this time, three times a charm. We have to see Clara Hammerstrom. It's like her third year in a row, if I'm not mistaken. Her results getting better and better every year. Maybe this time around she is uh, trying to go for a direct qualification rather than second chance. Lisa Ajax is back this time as a featured artist, apparently. She is a, um, uh, it's a fourth participation. She always made it to the finals some way or another. Omar Rutberg, also returning former FO and O member, as well as a uh, solo artist as well. We got Cornelia Jacobs. She was a former member of Love Generation. Now she's the first time as an individual performer and one of the biggest names, at least to Eurovision fans, is um, John Lundvik. It's his third participation. He won, as we all know, in 2019 with Too Late for Love, got a great fifth place at Eurovision. And I'm actually quite surprised to see him back so quickly, but that is good. I'm glad that he is not discouraged after that very uh, that meme that went viral of him. Um, Linda Bengtsing, another one that I think is her eighth or ninth participation at Melody Festival, and she's never won, but she's a schlager queen in the Swedish world. And her results as of late have gone uh, down a little, but maybe, maybe she'll uh, come back to prior glory. We shall see. Just based on some of these names that we've seen so far, Sean. Another one, by the way, Faith Kakembo, she took part a couple of years ago. She didn't make it to the finals, um, but this time around, she wants to do it. Um, is there anyone that really stands out to you? I'm like, hmm, they're on my radar out of the returning uh, names. Um, what are you curious about? Well, the thing is, I'm not really massively curious about a lot of the returning artists, and it's always been a problem I've had with Melody Festival, and is that I, I know what the same names are going to bring up every year. I know what John Ludwig's probably going to do. Um, although this year it's interesting that he's got a Swedish title, so I'm curious to see whether his song is in Swedish and what he's going to do. Um, I'd, I'd like to see more Swedish this year and every year just in general. Um, but I think with me, I always like to see more new acts, more sort of wild cards, and Melody Festival needs more wild cards because it's you get 28 artists every year and probably 18 of them seem to be there every year or most years, and it's like, I, I want more. I want more variety. Um, I'm pleased by the list I've seen today because, for example, like Cornelia Jacobs, I'm reading she's been in garage rock bands, um, Cassiopeia. I don't think you mentioned then she's been like a DJ songwriter. She's, she's done all kinds of music and yeah, I'm going to talk um, about the newbies a little bit in just a second. Yeah. Um, but I, I think just in terms of like the returning artists, I hope that they bring something. If, if they, if I didn't like them before, I'd like to see them to do something different. Um, Clara Hammerstrom had a really strong first entry. Um, but I really didn't like what she did second time around. So I hope it's more like the first than the second this year. Um, but yeah, there's, there's an interesting mix. There's an interesting mix. Yeah. I'm, I'm mostly echoing what you are saying actually in these comments. I'm not necessarily quite as anti, not anti, you're not like anti returnees, but I also like the new stuff out there. I like it more when they really bring something fresh and new to the table, the returnees. And you brought up John Lundvik. I am intrigued only because he's going for something that it's maybe less expected. I know it's a song in Swedish, but people usually shy away from that at Melody Festival because they never win. So it seems as to me, John Lundvik may not be going for a win, but more like for promotional purposes, or he really thinks, you know, it's time to bring Sweden as uh, the Swedish language back to Eurovision. 
and I would be all for it. So I'm really excited about John Lundvik's participation on because he is switching it up a little. Um, and yeah, but just to go back to your point, there are of course newer names. I got limited information. That one is Anders Bage. He is um, he was actually a featured judge um, on the Swedish Idol for many years, and then um, he's written music for big names: Janet Jackson, Celine Dion, Jennifer Lopez. Um, all of these get some others. So um, he certainly has had uh, his fair share of success, just like many Swedish songwriters, I guess. <laughs> um, he's, he has produced other songs, Eurovision songs in the past. Azerbaijan 2010, Drip Drop comes to mind. Um, some, and some other, like a couple of Azerbaijani entries, interestingly enough. So he's certainly um, um, fairly known, at least. I had a good amount of success already. Cassio Pai, she's a songwriter, a singer-songwriter. Um, and her first song was um, came with the song, I Belong to You. We don't know a whole lot about her, at least from an international perspective, but people in the chat, let us know if there's something else you have. Samira Manners, she is, um, she is also 21, a Swedish-British artist, and her music is inspired by the artists such as Tracy Chapman, uh, Macy Peer. So um, she has apparently a little bit of a um, less mainstream um, style. Uh, which always is a big question mark in terms of success, but sometimes they can really just set themselves apart as well. And then Theos, I think he's a Swedish TikTok star and a YouTuber influencer. Um, he received a record deal with Warner Brothers at some point, and um, his video for Hit, uh, I think it's the most watched Swedish uh, music video ever, or like at least this year, I have to look it up exactly. And um, now he is actually joining the Melfest lineup. I'm sure he will come with a hefty um, head start in the televote because, you know, they will vote for him. Um, there's an indie group called the Tribe Friday. They describe themselves as their favorite bubblegum emo boy band. <laughs> I'm very intrigued by that to hear your opinion on that, Sean. And Niela, as I said, a Swedish rapper and hip hop artist known as Niklas Gran. Uh, and he is, by the way, teaming up with Lisa Ajax um, to perform. Um, and that are some of the bigger names. Some of these, Sean, knowing that you are one of those, you know, appreciative of um, newbies, which one caught All your the attention? Foes. I mean, like, are you back? There you yes. are. Um, Cornelia Jacobs, for example, like I, like I mentioned, she's, um, I didn't know she was in Love Generation. That's quite interesting because uh, it says that she's been in garage rock bands and I'm, I'm really excited to see what she brings from that. Um, mentioned Cassiopeia. Um, the band really caught my eye, probably of the, the 14, Tribe Friday. Um, I'm always interested to see what acts like this do. Um, I think you can read a lot from a, a promotional image from an act, and I can already tell that I, I think this should be up my street. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, Your favorite sentence, this... we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm going to um, take a shot every time you say that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there's there's some interest there. Um, I just... I, I think another unknown this year is that we don't know what the post Bjorkman era is going to look like. What's, what's the MO? What's, you know, are, are we going for big success again? Are we going to try and be a bit different? Um, I want to see how the songs actually pan out because you can read one thing from the artist, but it can always surprise you. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd love to see, I think it was, was it Clara Klingenstrom? I think in 2021 mm -hmm. where she brought this just like, she came out of nowhere with this just like really beautiful guitar driven Simple. sort of guitar yeah. pop song in Swedish. And it captured the imagination of so many people like in the community on our forum. And I, I just love to see someone like that get through all the way. I know it's difficult um, with the system, but yeah, fingers crossed. It is very interesting because you make a good point about the, is there going to be a major shift or change in Melody Festival and in the post Christa Bjorkman era? Um, my gut feeling tells me no. I think they, you know, if things are broken, why fix it? You know, that kind of situation. Because you can argue validly about um, whether or not there is enough diversity or quality in Melody Festival and it's subjective, but we can argue about that. But we cannot argue about is their success at the contest because mm -hmm. clearly whatever you may think of the songs, it is working. It is working there almost every year they're in the top 10, even though this year was an exception, you can say, it was still you know qualifying from the final. So they do well enough to be like, maybe 
at this point, we don't need to change anything. So I'm not counting on a major difference. I agree with you for some reason out of the newbies that I've looked up, Tribe Friday is definitely big on my radar. An indie rock group as your favorite bubblegum emo boy band, I have no idea what that is going to be like, <laughs> but I'm very, very intrigued by it. And Sweden does this thing where I'm like, okay, they have a two, three songs that I'm actually really enjoy, but they're hardly almost every single year they pick a song that I feel very empty about. Uh, very manufactured song. So usually the winning song is not for me. So I'm hoping that will change um, come 2022 because I really want to root for Sweden. Um, but yeah, there's just their taste often ch uh, doesn't match with me. So that is definitely what's coming. And there will be 14 more acts. So these are only um, a few of them. Now, interestingly enough, in case you guys didn't know, um, there will be four semifinals, two acts from each semifinal, we move on to the finals. And then they're saying the second chance round is no more. And I'm like, what? And then they were just like, well, it is still a second chance round. Um, they're just gonna call it the fifth semifinal. And instead of having duels, they're just gonna have two groups. I'm like, okay, so it's second chance, just a different setup. So um, it's funny how they're trying to fool us with that. So, um, so it's basically the same, just a second chance round is slightly different setup. So I'm curious yeah. by everyone else in the chat, who are you most excited about out of those 14 at ESC United or any thoughts that you have on Can those? I, uh, can I just say on that point about like second chance, I'm so happy that they've done that because the yeah. dual system was any kind of dual system where you pit one song against another, it just doesn't work for selecting songs because you're always going to have an anti vote. So I, anti -vote. I'm thrilled that they've got rid of that because the, you know, it should just be about who are the best ones that didn't make it through. Let's put them in the final. So, you know, kudos to SVT for changing that. Yeah, I mean, they still have. I mean, I agree with that. The anti vote is certainly minimized. I don't think it's necessarily eliminated because SVT still has a say on who goes in what group. There still be groups. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So um, I'm still a little hesitant. And I'm, but I agree. I'm happy with the change. I just kind of giggle at the whole. We no longer have a second chance round. It's still a second chance because the songs didn't qualify the first round. So you don't have to change the name. Just say Anders Hansen has now a different setup. And the setup in Anders Hansen has changed over the years. It wasn't always the dual. It had, you know, I mean, it had like a dual setup, but there were also different kind of, um, uh, pre rounds as well. Um, Jelly S is saying, I'm very excited for the band, or the one we talked about, and as well as Liamo. So, yes, Liamo's music has not been my cup of tea, but I appreciate him as an artist. So, um, I'm very curious about that as well. So, we'll see how that's going to pan out again. Um, Sean, final question to you. Um, we're going to still get 14 other acts. Is there one that you really hope? whether it's a returnee or an act in Sweden that you really like that should take part that you want to see on that list or you haven't really given that a thought yet? Ooh, that is a good question. Um, and one that's difficult to answer when you've been put on the spot like that. I, I know. I'd like I, to I, see... I, the funny thing is I asked you that question. I'm like, Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't. don't I don't mind some of the returnees if they can really bring their A game and they've not been in for a little while. Um, mm -hmm. So, like Eric Saad in 2021, I, he had a great song and a great performance, and I, I was it brought value to the contest him being back. So, I'd like to see a few more of those potentially. Um, in terms of like actual Swedish artists, I'm not really too sure. There's a lot of like Sweden's do Swedish people. Sorry, do a lot of really good dance music. And I'd love to see Sweden just go all out and do like a like a DJ with a or a producer with a vocalist and go down that route and really you know just bring the party to Turin. I'd love to see something like that. Um, yeah. I don't know if that'll happen though. I'd, it, it's difficult for something like that to get voted all the way through. I guess so. We'll see. I'm hoping that people feel encouraged after the 21 results of Eurovision to not be scared of a song in the native tongue. Look, and I mentioned yeah. last week five four out of the five songs in the top five were non-english songs and um hello and that's not just like only the jury or only televoters they both said you know for the juries was like switzerland and france and even but for all of them they both kind of agreed to a certain extent you know those were the best songs so um i hope that they feel encouraged by that 
that is my hope. But more to come on that once the second half of the artist will be released. So, uh, but to answer the question that I asked you as well, I don't necessarily have an act in mind, but I'm really hoping for um, a little bit more diversity in the language. I mean, they have a set amount of um, Swedish songs in each show, but they tend to pick the songs that they know don't have a good shot. So they end up maybe with one song in the finals that is in Swedish, or like two sometimes, you know what I mean? Uh, knowing that they'll never ever gonna win. Yeah. So um, that is... Um, I mean, one act we could say is like Alcazar. Like, why not just why not just give them their chance now? You know, I like know. one final roll of the dice or BWO or someone like that. Just like, you know, for a proper blast from the past, one final chance to to do it. And at least if they fail, they fail, you know, by bringing a party. That Something like that would be nice as well from a return. Exactly. Um, Jelly S is actually asking a good question here. I actually think they should get rid of the age group. Some great songs fell out, more votes, but the age groups messed it up. I also want 100% televoting in the final for Sweden. Um, my opinion on this is I actually like the age group only because one age group dominates the vote. And you get a very specific sound and artists um, pushed because they vote the most. Uh, while traditional people that only vote like once or twice, right? Like a certain of certain age. So I do think they need to balance it out a little. And that is why I personally, I'm in favor of it only because it just makes it a little bit more fair. Um, but that's just my opinion on that one. And, um, 100% televoting in the final for Sweden, that I actually would feel good about it. And I'm the one that's a proponent of the international juries actually at Eurovision. I'm not necessarily a fan of the international juries in national finals, a proponent, only because they're they're being instructed, at least in Melody Festival, and to pick what they think has the best success at Eurovision, not what the best song is. Yeah. And um, th those kind of criteria. And I think that takes away a little bit from the excitement. They're just, it's too clinical, for the lack of a better word. I, I think you raise a very good point there, because I think it's also conditioned Swedish voters to start thinking that way. So in the last few years, you've seen a lot of very manufactured safe pop songs make it through. And it's like, is that genuinely what the Swedish people want to see represent them at Eurovision? Mm -hmm. Or is that just what they've been conditioned to think does well at Eurovision? And yes, it's been successful. But, you know, is that now where they're at? Is that, have they been conditioned to do that? And then when it, it flops or when it fails in the televote, for example, you know, is it a surprise? Is it a shock to them? So yeah, I think you raised a very good point there. Of course, I raised it. It's always a good point when it comes to <laughs> me, right? By default. 